All right guys, so for today, we're gonna to be doing a video talking about battery preconditioning. So what we're gonna do is go to one supercharger at 150 kilowatt Tesla supercharger without preconditioning the battery. So going straight there just to see if the actual battery is gonna be charging up as fast as it can without preconditioning, especially with a good weather in the summer. And then from there, we're gonna to go to a 250 kilowatt Tesla supercharger station and precondition the battery. So we're gonna see if preconditioning is actually worth it in the summer when you're going to a fast charger. You want to see what's the actual differences in speed that you'll get when you precondition versus when you don't precondition. All right, so the battery is currently at 21% and the actual supercharger we're going to, like I said, is going to be this one in Brossard. And let's see what percentage we're going to reach with. So we're going to reach with 13%. Hopefully we reach with a little bit less because I want it to be around 10% for both places. And the second supercharger that we're going to go to is going to be all the way up here. And this one is a 250 kilowatt. So we'll be able to max it out with the preconditioning. So first things first, let's go to the actual first supercharger and let's see how fast it can actually charge without preconditioning. All right, so we're at the supercharger. There's a problem though. There's too many Teslas charging. Right now, uh, the car is not gonna charge at full capacity just because we're at 150 kilowatt charger and we're gonna be power sharing. So as you can see, bunch of different Teslas charging. One parked over there. So yeah, we're gonna just plug it in and see how fast it actually charges. So we're only gonna plug in for 10 minutes. But yeah, since we're at 150 kilowatt and everyone's charging, it might just take 75 kilowatts. So the experiment is not gonna be as complete as I thought it would be. So let's wait for it to start charging. It's probably gonna peak at 73, 72 kilowatts because of the power sharing of all these Teslas. The uh, fact that we didn't precondition affected the, uh, affected the actual charge and we're at 74. So we did max out. So let's see if it continues. How long is it gonna stay at 73? All right, so it's been four minutes. We're still pegged at 73 kilowatts. And if we see here, we're only at 19%. So we went from 12% to 19% in four minutes. We have six minutes to go to get to the max 10 minutes. I don't think we'll have enough if we only charge for 10 minutes to get to our next destination. All right, so change of plans for the video. We're gonna to go to a supercharger at Laval. So that one is an, uh, another 150 kilowatts. And we're able to, so we charged here, we got here at 12%, then we charged to 23. So since this supercharger is completely full and we couldn't do the test properly, we'll go to this supercharger here. We reached that with 13%. And then from there, we'll do the test, see how fast it charges, because that supercharger has a lot of stalls available. So it wouldn't have the power sharing problem that we have right now. And then from there, we'll go to the 250 kilowatt supercharger and precondition there. So like that, we can actually get the fastest charge and compare both charges. So yeah, see you guys at the Laval supercharger. So we're at the charger and there's barely any Teslas here. It's actually pretty good. It's 150 kilowatt. We didn't precondition. We're gonna see how fast it actually charges. Right, so it is 12% right now. So we'll go and plug it in. Like I said, there's not many Teslas over here. And since it's 150, I don't think it's gonna max out at 170, even if we were at a faster charger. But let's see. All right, so we plug it in. Once it turns green, it's gonna be charging. And it's green. So let's look inside and see where we're at. All right, so it's still 12%, going from 20 kilowatts, 40, 65, 82. So we're, we already passed the previous supercharger. So it's going to 112, 120. If it reaches at 150, then I think it would have probably went higher than 150 if if we were at a 250 kilowatt. But since it looks like it's peaking at 120, 
So yeah, so it looks like without preconditioning, at 12%, we peaked at 120 kilowatts. So that's actually pretty good, but we can see how fast we would go if we reached at a supercharger with 12% and we could go all the way to 170. So we're gonna see how fast it charges for 10 minutes. So it started from 12%. Let's see in 10 minutes where we reaches. All right, so the card does say it will take 10 minutes to get to 50%. We're still at 120 kilowatts. We've been here for two minutes now. So the, it tells me, the fact that it's still at 120 tells me that it could have peaked higher if we preconditioned. But yeah, that's the test. We go here to a fast charger without preconditioning, and then we do the same thing with the same percentage, but we precondition and see the actual differences. So in 10 minutes, we should be roughly about 30, 40%, but let's see, it's been three minutes now. So we'll just wait another seven minutes and see how far we get. All right, so three minutes left till we're done. We're still at 120 kilowatts. I think it's gonna stay 120 for the whole time. So yeah, it's gonna be a very, very good curve. Even if you don't precondition, you still have a good battery management and the speed of the charge is actually still pretty good. I was expecting maybe a lot less, but obviously we are in perfect conditions. Um, the actual temperature outside is 29 degrees Celsius. So the condition is actually perfect for the battery. That's probably why that we start getting another like, charge. All right, so it's about to be 218 and we're at 42%. So we added 30% to the battery. Let's see once it reaches 218, 31%. We're still at 120 kilowatts. So that's pretty much it. 30% pegged at 120 kilowatts. Very, very nice charge. Didn't expect that to be our charge, but yeah. We got 31% added in 10 minutes. So let's see if the preconditioning actually adds more than 31% in 10 minutes, but I think it's gonna be roughly the same. And that just might be just because the temperature outside is beautiful. We're at a warm, cool temperature, not too hot, not too cold. So I think even if you do precondition, we're not gonna add that much to the battery. But we'll see to the next charger. So when we get to the next charger, we'll film it, charge for 10 minutes, and we'll see how much we get. All right, so we're gonna put the supercharger on the map and we're gonna precondition to the 250 kilowatt supercharger. So then from there, we'll be able to see if we can actually get a little bit more charge out of the battery while preconditioning. But so we, let's see if we can get 170. We'll try to arrive there with the, around the same percentage. Right now, we're seeing that we're gonna be there with 16%, but I think it's not taking into account how long it's gonna precondition for yet. I'll just drive a little bit harder so we can bring the battery percentage down. But yeah, so we're gonna get there with 16% right now, but hopefully we can get the full 170 kilowatts uh, when we're going to charge at the 250 kilowatt charger. So we made it to the supercharger. We're at 13%. The car stopped preconditioning because we arrived and the temperature was perfect. So enough. like Tesla fashion, all you have to do is just take the charger and plug it in. All right, so it's charging. So let's go inside and see. All right, so 6.03 right now. So we already peaked at 170 kilowatts. So basically, you're gonna see about a 50 kilowatt difference if you're going to precondition, but it's good to see that in the summer, you don't really need a car that actually preconditions. You'll still get fast charging. Obviously you would get faster charging if you had a car that actually preconditions, but you would still get a good amount of charge. So as you can see, the peak is already going down. So we're at 156, 154, and we're only one minute in. So Tesla don't really hold their peak that fast or that long, I should say, but they do have a nice peak. With this battery being only 60 kilowatt, uh, kilowatt hours, you don't really need that much of a high. And it's about five minute mark and we're at 128 kilowatt um, charge speed. So it's been five minutes halfway there and we still haven't 
reach the 120 kilowatts. So obviously, if you do precondition, you will have a faster charge and it'll last you for a longer time. If we reach the 120 kilowatts um, earlier, then I would say maybe preconditioning is not that important in the summer, especially when the temperatures are perfect. But right now, it does look like even if you precondition, regardless of the temperature, you'll still get a better charge than if you don't precondition. So it's been five minutes. We've added about 20% battery, so now it's 21% battery, and we're, we're still over the 120 kilowatts. So now we're at 42%. If I'm not mistaken, uh, we stopped the charge 10 minutes in. The last one, the last charge without preconditioning, we stopped at 43%. I think in the winter or in the fall, when the temperatures outside are gonna be colder, I think preconditioning is gonna take a much larger role. Uh, but right now, it does seem that in the summertime, preconditioning is not that much of an important role. So, so it's about to end now. I think the limit that I set for 50% is exactly the time and we're at 49%, so let's stop the charge. Stop it here. So yeah, let's stop the charge and then talk about everything we did. So finally ended with 50% in 10 minutes. Let's unplug and let's recap. I'm just unplug here. So we're at 50% in 10 minutes. So we went to a fast charger in Brossard that had 150 kilowatts, but we couldn't really do the test there because there are too many Tesla's charging over there, so we had to go to another one. So we went to one in Laval that has 150 kilowatts as well. We still didn't precondition to both. So both first charges we didn't precondition. And at the Laval fast charger, we got 120 kilowatts the whole way from the beginning all the way to the end. And we ended up, we started with 12% and ended with 43%. So we added about 31% of battery. With this charger, the one that's the 250 kilowatts that we preconditioned to, we picked at 170 but we didn't keep that same peak of over 120 kilowatts even when we preconditioned. So when we were at the uh, Laval supercharger, we were at 120 kilowatts even past 40%. But with this one, we slowed down after 40% and didn't really make sense considering we preconditioned. The only thing that can explain the fact that we, lo we were lower than 120 kilowatts is because we uh the battery has more energy already put in from the beginning and the battery temperature might be hotter so it slowed down the charge but regardless we still had more charge than we did without preconditioning so with preconditioning we have 50 percent without preconditioning we had 43 percent and went from 12 to 43 and went from 13 to 50. so we still had more put into the battery but not that much more so if you have a car that don't have battery preconditioning and you live in a place where it's summer all the time, then you can get by with it. But if you're in a place where it has a lot of winter, has the fall, and you don't have battery preconditioning, and also you don't have a good supercharger or fast charger network, then you might be screwed there. So yeah, see you guys on the next video. Peace.